All right, y'all. So the Pope ended up in some hot water for some comments he made on Russia and Ukraine. Um, of course, he's not speaking in English here, so I'm going to play it for you, and then I'll read for you what he's actually saying. But uh, this is interesting. So this is originally reported from Reuters here. We'll go through it, and then I'll react to it. Big scandal, this is. Interpretation, è vero. It's one interpretation. It's true. But I think that, that the strongest one is the one who looks at the situation, thinks about the people, and has the courage of the white flag of negotiating. And today, you can negotiate with the help of international powers. There are some. The word negotiate is a courageous word. When you see that you are defeated, when things are not going well, you have to have the courage to negotiate. One may feel shame, but how many dead will happen with the war, basically? And it will be even worse. Negotiate in time. Find a country that can be a mediator. Don't be ashamed to negotiate before things get worse. Okay, so basically what he's saying, it's a message for Ukraine. And he's like, look, you have to have the courage to admit when you're defeated. It's courageous to wave the white flag and to negotiate. Now, by the way, that doesn't make total sense. I get what he's trying to say, but it doesn't make total sense to me because those are different things, right? Saying we're going to negotiate is not the same as a white flag. A white flag is like, we're defeated. So there's nothing to even negotiate here. You do whatever you want. That's what the white flag is. White flag is... There is no two sides that are trying to find a middle ground. White flag is, we're defeated, and we basically get no say, right? So it's a little bit contradictory, but if I'm being kind to him, I put aside the defeated, I put aside the white flag thing, and what he means to say is, it's the right thing to negotiate uh, to try to get some sort of a peaceful resolution because we don't want more people dying, right? That's... That's the gist. If I'm being kind in my interpretation to what he's trying to say, that's the gist of it. That, you know, when you don't have the upper hand and you're struggling to double down and triple down and throw bodies at the front lines to get mowed down to eventually get to a place in two, three, four years, whatever it is anyway, where you sit down and say, all right, fine, let's talk it out. Let's just cut to the chase now. Right. Let's just cut to the chase and try to find some sort of reasonable solution for everybody. Now, there's a lot of backlash over this, man. There's a lot of backlash. In fact, you know, we, if we were to go and read the commentary here, say Putin's Pope. Many years ago, I read a book titled Hitler's Pope. I told the story of Eugenio Pacelli, Pope Pius. Anyway, so it's like they're, they're saying basically, uh, you know, he's a Putin simp. He's a uh, Russia simp. This person says Ukraine is very far from defeated. And if the small group of right wing U.S. Republicans pulled their fingers out and stopped blocking U.S. military aid, Ukraine would be winning. So anyway, this is just some of the YouTube comments. But you can imagine uh, what their reaction is from elite Western circles. They don't they don't like hearing this. They don't like hearing this. So what's my take on it? Honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm a little mixed on it overall. Right. I'm a little mixed on it overall because. If I was in his shoes, I think my message would have been directed at Russia, okay? Russia is the country that invaded Ukraine. They are the aggressors. Ukraine is the victim. So you can ha do the same rant, right, but direct it at Russia and say, look, what exactly do you really want here? What are you trying to accomplish? What are you trying to accomplish? What are your goals? And understand that it's not worth tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dead Ukrainians and Russians, Russian uh, soldiers. So what are you doing here? You should withdraw. You should calm down. If there's any contention, any issue, yes, you should negotiate with the Ukrainian government. Because the fact of the matter is we just saw the Tucker Carlson interview with Vladimir Putin. He was very cagey 
and very sketchy on the idea that he would be open to negotiation and conversation, right? He seems to think, I really do have the upper hand. It's only a matter of time until I win the whole shit. So what is there to even negotiate anymore, right? Tucker tried to nail him down multiple times on, are you open to a negotiated settlement? And it was very like, <laughs> which says to me, kind of like, not really, bro. Like, not really. So I think the outrage stems from the fact that he's talking to the, to the country that are the victims of an illegal and offensive invasion. And he's like, you guys need to negotiate. Well, you know, think about that precedent for a second. Think about that precedent that that sets. Any bigger, more powerful country can invade any smaller, weaker country. And then according to the Pope, the smaller, weaker country needs to be like, ah, all right. Hey, what do you want? How much territory? How much money? Like, what can we do to work it out here? Right? So I'm a little confused that he's pointing it at Russia, right? But having said that, could I could I defend his argument? Yeah, I definitely can defend his argument in the sense that he's he's the Pope, right? He's a religious figure. He just wants the bloodshed to stop. And he probably feels like um, it's the Ukrainians being obstinate. And in his mind, he probably thinks Russia would agree to some deal where Crimea is theirs, portions of the Donbass are theirs, the rest of Ukraine gets neutrality, and then all the bloodshed stops. I think that's the lens he's viewing it through. He's thinking there is some sort of territorial grievance uh, for Putin, and if that's addressed everything will be okay. And we can we can have some sort of negotiated settlement. It is very possible that that's true. It's possible that that's true, okay? And I don't want to downplay that. It is also possible, though, that that's not true, right? And that the people who are saying, you know, shut up and give him some of what he wants and negotiate some sort of a deal, that he agrees to the deal, and then immediately after that, he goes right back to arming and funding uh, separatist groups and is basically buying time before he does an invasion of another post-Soviet country. Right? I think that's the fear that he's not um, he's not weighing into account. He doesn't he he doesn't think of this in the context of well, what happens if you set the precedent? You give him a lot of what he wants, and then he goes, "That's not enough anyway." Right? I mean, it's look, it's the classic Neville Chamberlain problem. Now, I'm not a I don't like comparing like. Every single situation that comes up globally, it's like, who's Hitler in this scenario? I don't like that. I think it's rare that that's an appropriate reaction. Netanyahu. <clears throat> like, I don't know if it's if it's uh, apt. I don't know if it applies vis-a-vis Putin and Russia, but honestly, it could go either way. Either he has territorial ambitions that go far beyond what he's currently doing, or he doesn't, right? Either uh, the what he's trying to do in Ukraine is in his mind, defensive because NATO was encroaching and we need to protect ourselves, et cetera, et cetera. We feel like they're going to do regime change against us. Either it's that or it's the other thing he said, which is basically we think Ukraine is a fake country. We want to rebuild the Russian empire. And so we're going to take what's ours, right? Or it's a mix of those things. But I don't think, I don't think the Pope has considered that it's possible you make a deal and then Putin doesn't abide by it at all. And he just tries to take more. Especially because now we all know the state of the Ukrainian military is rough and, you know, the average age is like 40-something of the fighters and people are forced conscription and all this stuff. I think that's going on in Russia, too, to be fair. But, like, they're, it's a struggle in Ukraine. So, look, my overall take on the conflict, um, I do think you should use diplomacy and negotiate, but that has to cut both ways, right? It needs to be Zelensky and the U.S. and the U.K. and the West, they need to be willing to say, yeah, let's figure this out, but also Putin needs to be willing to say it. So my take is give peace a chance. But I do that knowing full well, even if you negotiate a settlement, right, it's possible that the deal sticks. It's possible. It's possible you give away Crimea, you give away parts of the Donbass, you have neutrality for Ukraine, and then, boom, would you look at that? It seems like we got a lasting peace out of it. That's possible. And I don't want to downplay that reality, that that is certainly on the table and it could happen. It's also possible that you do all that stuff and then Putin just continues to invade other countries anyway or go deeper in Ukraine anyway. You know, no, none of us thought early on he would try to move on Kiev and they moved on Kiev, right? In the early days of the war. Everybody was shocked by that. So 
Yeah, I mean, from his perspective as a religious leader, he just like, stop the bloodshed. Stop the bloodshed, which I agree with. I like that. But I think to put the onus more on the victimized country in this scenario, that strikes me as just misplaced. You know, like you want to say first and foremost to, sure, you could say to Ukraine, you guys need to be willing to talk too, right? But first and foremost, the dude who's doing the invading, not the invadee, the one who's doing the invading. It's like, hey, dog, what do you want? Reel it in. What's the problem here? Let's talk it out. Let's figure out a solution to this because uh, the onus is certainly on that dude. All right, guys, that's the show. That's the show. Love you all very much, as always. Thank you for listening to my dumbass babble. I truly appreciate it. Everybody, um, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, click that bell icon so you get a notification every time a video drops. You know the deal. You know the shameless plugs. Thank you to everybody who supports this show on Patreon. If you'd like to support, that link below. Remember, I don't do any ad reads. I don't talk to any advertisers. And it's all because you guys help fund this show from the ground up, and I'm deeply appreciative. You can also tip on YouTube with the thanks button. That's right below me as well. All right, I love you guys. I'll talk to you soon. Everybody have a great rest of your day. Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop. And watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.